Whether it's served hot or cold, meatloaf is one of those delicious, hearty meals for lunch or dinner. And this is not any meatloaf, this is my grand's meatloaf, so it's very special to me. So to start with, we need two types of meat. I've got some beef mince here, so 500 grams of beef mince, that goes into a large mixing bowl, along with pork mince. Now, we always use pork mince for our meatloaf because it ensures that it stays really moist. So even amounts, 500 grams of pork mince which is a little bit fatty. It's fantastic. So we need something to bind our meatloaf. So 100 grams of fresh breadcrumbs, if you can get some fresh ones, along with some milk. That can go straight in there. A tablespoon of hot English mustard. That can go in with six tablespoons of just ketchup or tomato sauce. Some Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoons and some brandy. So about one and a half tablespoons of brandy and that goes in there. That's her special ingredient. And we need some fresh herbs, so some parsley here. Two to three sprigs is plenty. And in it goes. All we need now is some seasoning, so a good pinch of salt and some pepper. And with some very clean hands, we need to bind this all together. So we want to just fold it in, squish it together, and we'll also add our onion. So I've just got one whole onion here, and I always cook the onion off. There's nothing worse than getting some raw onion in something like this. Just finely chop, cook it off, and then allow it to cool. So I've cooled this down. So let's finish mixing that in. Great, that's looking good. So I've got my folded loaf tin here. I like this because it's double coated, so when it's cooking, it can slowly cook and not dry out. Put it in one side, over there, into the centre, and then into the last section, giving it a good press down, making sure that we don't leave any gaps. I like to garnish this with some bay leaves. It's not only a garnish, but you'll actually get some beautiful flavour from this. And I just lay them just on top, just lining them up next to each other so we've got a lovely line. Now, I don't want them to burn too much, so just with a little bit of olive oil, we'll just drizzle that on the leaves and then into another tray here, so a deep tray. I've got some water here. And you want to fill this tray up about halfway up that tin. This is crucial if you don't want dry meatloaf. I hate dry meatloaf. This now goes into the oven for an hour and 15 minutes at 160 degrees. The meatloaf is looking fantastic. It's come out of the oven and just allow it to rest at least for 10 to 15 minutes to cool down. And all I do, again, with clean hands, take it out. This is the simplest way because it does shrink just a little bit. Drain off some of that liquid and then onto a board. And you can serve that at the table as is with mashed potato and peas classically. I would serve this maybe with some pasta and some tomato sauce. But my favourite way and how Gran would do it is just slicing a little bit with a knife. I'll just get a big chunk here. I always like the end bits because it's a little bit crunchy. Look how moist that is. That's moist because we cooked it at 160 degrees and in that water bath, so that's very important. Onto a lovely little plate here and with some chutney. Gran would always make her homemade chutneys. I've made a lovely little chutney here too and we just want to place a lovely dollop on top. A little green salad is quite suitable. Again, with any salad, we want to season it with some salt and a little bit of good quality extra virgin olive oil. Give it a mix. And we'll just serve that just on the side there. That is an exceptional lunch. Maybe a little bit of crusty bread, all just as is, is perfect. I'm going to dig in. Look at that, so moist. A little bit of chutney. That meatloaf could bring tears to my eyes because I never changed that recipe. Gran knew what she was talking about when she developed this one. Adding that hot English mustard and brandy really makes a difference.